at the Carnival Police Department deal with a lot of issues you guys were having questions about. So uh, everybody, you know, it's it's not something people like to talk about, but we all know what like kidnapping is, right? Everybody know what that means? I can describe it. If someone doesn't know, it doesn't mean I can describe it real quick, quickly. So everybody knows what that means. So physical safety, which I'm gonna start with, is everybody knows kind of what stranger danger is, right? Okay, you don't get into cars with people you don't know. You don't go into buildings or homes of, with people you don't know, uh, things like that. So when you guys were talking, did you have questions about that? Did anybody have a question about physical safety that I could maybe answer for them? Like what to do, let's say if somebody did try to do that to you, what would we do? Does anybody know what they would do? Okay, that's what I'm gonna tell you today. So every circumstance, just in my job, every different call that I go on is different. So, but there are some basic things that you guys should know. And that number one is if somebody tries to get you to get in a car or a vehicle or anything like that, what you need to do is first off, don't do it. Second of, second of all, if they try to make you do it, what do you think you should do? Run, and you make as much noise as you can, you can make. You scream at the top of your lungs, you say, help, 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 or scream police, help, police, something like that. Now, if you see a police officer, are, are you guys scared to come up to talk to me or any other police officer? If you needed help, would you be scared to? So if you saw one of us and we're worried somebody was trying to do something like that, I'd want you to immediately come to me or any other police officer, even if it's not a police officer with the Carnival Police Department. You come, let us know what's going on, and we'll keep you safe, I promise you that. So if something did work, like I said, this is just pretend, and if something was like to, to happen, and you make noise, you run, but let's say you can't get away from them, what do you do? fight yeah. you fight or you and if you can't fight you lay down you lay down because you'd be surprised how hard it is to move somebody when they're not helping you okay and you keep making noise and screaming for help and all that good stuff okay does anybody have any questions about that or go ahead did you have a question okay is that all does everybody understand that with what you do you make it difficult that's the number one thing you don't make it easy that's the most important thing is to make it difficult. So let's say kind of transitioning it, you guys asked me a few questions about that you spoke with Mrs. Steiner about. Is there any of them that, that she wasn't able to answer that you want some more detailed answers with? I think one was uh, a few people when they were getting physical, when they physically, when they were getting off of the bus, there were cars sitting there and they were nervous. They didn't really know what to do. Should they get off the bus? Should they go to their house? Should they get, you know, and right. that was one of the questions they had. Uh, I'm a firm believer in this and I'm, all my colleagues, other police officers are, always follow your 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 gut instinct if that car is outside the bus and makes you feel uncomfortable or you think it's weird tell the bus driver you you're you're worried about who is this person it's, it's scaring me what's the worst that can happen they send they call me i go i talk to the person in the car find out who they are so now i know who they are what vehicle they're in and they're gonna tell me what they're doing right there. And then I can, then I'll go, but it would take a short amount of time. And then I would tell you guys, it's good to get off. So if that ever happened, always follow your gut instinct. Because don't ever be afraid to call the police or tell your parents or your teachers something that's making you uncomfortable because you think it's not a big deal. I would much rather be wrong 99.999% of the time and it be a false alarm than for you not to do something and then something bad did happen. 
And another one in regards to that, they said after they had gotten home from school that um, they were waiting for mm -hmm. their parents to get home and they felt weird about, they felt like there was someone outside right. sitting in a car, just standing or walking by and they really you know, felt uncomfortable. Right. Would you recommend that they do? That was a big question. That's that's a good question. That, actually, I, if you guys yeah. ever, and, and I know you're not supposed to have your phones, but I will write the number. Uh, do any of you not live in Carbonville? Where do you guys live at? Chesterfield. Chesterfield? Yeah. I just live outside. Just outside? That's still fine. And where do you live? Outside Chesterfield. Okay. Five miles out of Carbonville. Five miles, still close enough. Chesterfield's a little bit long, but if, as long as, is. I'm going to use the whiteboard up here finally. So this is the Cardinalville Police off, uh, Police Department's telephone number. And this phone number is not like dialing 911. Obviously, if you are ever scared, worried, and it's an emergency or you can't remember this, or you didn't put this phone number in your phone, this is our non-emergency line. So let's say, like you were explaining, you said... Uh, you're getting off the bus or you're, you're walking up to home you see somebody suspicious sitting there just keep walking by get out your phone and call 854-3221 if you're in Chesterfield that's the Macoupin County Sheriff's Department this is Carnival PD uh, Macoupin County Sheriff's Department very similar number easy to remember or you can always put this in your uh, later. So, and then after you'll call our number, it would have a, a, someone immediately answer. The Sheriff's Department has a bunch of different offices and things like that. So as soon as you hear somebody talk on the phone, it's a recording, you just hit one and that takes you to the dispatcher. So what you would do is you would just keep walking by your house, get out your phone, call that number, say, you know, uh, I'm Brandon Ryer. I live at 414 East First North Street. Uh, I, you know, I'm this, this many years old. I just walked home. There's uh, someone standing on the corner that's acting strange, or there's someone uh, in my backyard. Uh, I continue to walk towards the courthouse, past my house. Could a police officer please? just check on it and then I'll wait for him here. That's exactly how you would do it. And then myself or any other police officer would go, stop the person, find out who it is and what they're doing there. And then, then our police dispatcher or the county's police dispatcher would call you back and say, it's safe to go home. So that's exactly what you would do. Does that answer the question or? Just about. Does anybody have any questions about that? Now, when you guys go home, do you? Uh, does everybody? Does anybody's house is not locked up when they get home, or do you all have keys or some way to get in the house? Does that everybody, for the most part, have their houses locked during the day? No. No. Okay. Or do you have like a keypad that you can punch on the garage? Okay. I would strongly suggest, and you guys can go home tonight and. Tell your parents I said, uh, I said so. That if, if your houses are not locked up during the day and there's not someone home, like if your mom doesn't work or your dad works from home, that's obviously a totally different thing because they're home. But if there's not, always have tell your parents it's a couple bucks to make you a key, copy of the key, you can wear it around your lanyard that you have to have at school anyways. And then you know that your house is locked up when you get home. We had just recently, we had a, a, a couple girls who were older than you. They got home after school, and luckily, it was everything was okay. But they did the exact perfect thing. They didn't know that their, their dad had been working on the door, the back door. Well, it was really windy that day, and when they got home, they opened up the door, and when you open up their front door, you can see directly back to their back door, through the kitchen and the door was wide open and there was a chair knocked over. So what they did is they immediately ran out of the house, 
uh, ran down a block away from their house and they called us. We went and checked. We contacted their parents. Their dad said the door had been broken and we had a bunch of wind that day. And all that happened is the wind blew the door open. But what did they do? They took a precaution. And I was very proud of those girls because a lot of people would have been like, oh, the door's open and keep going in. But what if someone had broken in there and was still in the house? So you always want to be careful. I'd rather you call me a thousand times with false alarms than have one real real thing. Is there anybody in here that maybe, and this is probably because their parents won't let them, is there anybody in here that doesn't have uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or some kind of social media? Is there anybody in here that doesn't have it? I know somebody that works in the bank. You what? I know somebody that went to bank and that doesn't have it. Oh, that went to bank. You don't have any Facebook or anything like that? I don't have a phone. Because you don't have a phone? Okay. Would you have it if you had a phone? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. So we got one person in here that, that doesn't, and, and to be honest with you, so on the internet, he is the safest person because it's not on there. Now, you can't survive in this world anymore without the, the internet. We're all going to be on it. I use it every single day of my job, my personal life, anything. I don't know what I'd do anymore without it. Uh, so how do we keep ourselves, like we were talking about, we keep ourselves safe physically, but how do we keep ourselves safe on the internet? Go ahead. There you go. Go ahead. Exactly. There you go. Or not at all. What was that? Uh, she said, if if somebody asked for your name and or something, don't give them your real name or your birthday or anything like that. Make up, make it a false one. So every one of you in here would probably. A total of maybe five minutes I could know a lot about you on the internet through your Facebook uh, and I could find out your phone numbers I could find out your tele uh, your addresses who your parents are things like that what who your friends are where your friends live anything like that so what we want like for especially you guys at your age to do is with the internet is take just a few precautions to make sure you know do, do some of you put your address on your Facebook account or Instagram? No? Do some of you have, could I look up on your Facebook and maybe find your phone number? No? Nobody? Good. That's good. I'm really glad to hear that. When uh, Facebook first came out, there was a lot of that information was on there. You, you could find people's addresses, even if you weren't friends with them. Like she said, set your account to private. That is a very good idea. Because who needs to be looking at your information besides maybe just your profile pic, unless they're already your friend, right? Nobody, right? And if you want to be friends with them, they can send you a friend request. So we're all good with that. Do you have you guys ever got on? A lot of you have cell phones, right? Have it? Has anybody ever got one of those weird numbers that calls them? Happens to me about once a day. Do you guys answer them? Good job. Good. Because uh, what we're running into a lot with police work now is people who do answer them, like older people, like your grandparents and things like that, they'll answer them and they'll keep talking and talking and hello, hello, hello. Well, they can record your voice. The people that are trying to scam and do fraudulent things, they can record your voice and, you know, use that with certain technologies nowadays to, to get access to other things that they want. Maybe they want to get uh, in your bank accounts or something like that. Well, you guys, probably most, most of you don't have a bank account right now, but you will one day. But what do you guys think though when you put something on the internet and you're like, man, I shouldn't have done that. And then you take it off. You think it's gone? Because anything you put on the internet is forever can't take it back. That's why you got to be very careful when you do put certain things on the internet that you realize that. Uh, do any of you have like a YouTube channel or anything like that? You do? Do you ever uh, take YouTube videos at your house sometimes? Okay. Do you 
like outside where I could see on the video what your house looked like from the outside? Okay, that's good. You don't ever want that stuff to be on the internet because with maybe a little bit more work, you could find, you know, if you lived in the big pink house with green shutters and I knew you were from Carlinville because I looked it up on your YouTube info, I could probably figure out where you live. Might take me a while, but I could. So, when you guys get, when you're on, have you, has anybody ever had someone try to add them on Facebook and they have no idea who it is? Lots of you? Okay. Do you guys accept those friend requests? Okay. That's very good. Because a lot, nowadays with, with Facebook especially, they're, have you ever heard of cloning a, an account? Where they, they could get on your Facebook, clone your, take your pictures, take your information, make another Facebook with a different email, and pretend to be you. And you would be shocked at how much stuff, and then they add all your friends that they can see on your list, so then they're getting into other people's information and think about all the stuff they can do. So we just got to be very mindful about what we put on there. Do you guys ever, have you ever, does anybody have a story where something uh, weird or suspicious happened to them with social media or on the internet? Or a weird person texts them, anything like that? Captain. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, that's you. This person, he kept asking me how old I was. Yeah. Yeah. Did you give him any information? No? And you just quit talking to him? So, like, once you quit talking with him, I'm sure he bothered you for a little bit longer. But then, then what eventually happened? I blocked him. You blocked him? And that's a good tool, too, to use. I don't know if you can use blocking on Instagram or anything like that. You can do that, too? Okay. I don't have Instagram. I do have Facebook. So I know quite a bit about that. But... And I have Snapchat, and I understand how that works. Do you guys know that on your Snapchat, there's a certain setting that lets anybody that is your, that's added you on Snapchat or you've added them, lets you know your exact location when you took that Snapchat? Did you know that? Yeah. So if, if somebody you kind of didn't know or somebody was pretending to be somebody else, and you took a Snapchat and said, you know, long day at school, uh, cold walk home, and they and you took that, and they looked at your location and saw you were over here at McDonald's, and they knew where that you lived, they could fairly assume where you were at, right? So that's why I'm a firm believer in making sure that if you guys do have Snapchat, you have that setting turned off, and you know how to get the settings, right? And it's, I think it's called Share My Location. You can turn it on and off. So if any of you guys do have that, please please take it off. Really, what does it matter if somebody knows where you took a Snapchat, right? Does it really matter? Is it that important? So how about... will tell their parents if something has happened. Some are nervous to tell their parents if something has happened and they find themselves just kind of caught up in something bad is happening over the internet. Maybe right. people are saying bad things about them. Maybe they're sending <laughs> pictures to them. Mm -hmm. And I told students, do not, if, if someone is randomly sending you a picture, not to even open it up. Or not to even open up that message and to try and tell their parents. But if they don't feel comfortable about it, what is your suggestion? What can, I mean, what would you if have you, them If you didn't feel comfortable, you guys all know where the police department is, or and now you have the number, and for those of you who live in Chesterfield, right there, we can always just come 
we could come and look at it and we could decide if it was something that we needed to look into further or if we can talk to your parents about it. You wouldn't be in any trouble of any sort. Uh, I've had uh, an incident before with a, a person who sent a Snapchat to a bunch of people uh, and basically saying he wanted to hurt himself. So out of all the people that he sent the Snapchat to, only probably one of 20 went to their mom and said, hey, this happened, I'm worried. So this mom contacted me and I went down, I went and I found him and he had, he, he was what's called reaching out for help. And only one of those people, because all the other kids were too afraid to tell their parents. You guys, you know that you can talk to your parents just about anything and they will never ever ever be mad. They, they won't be mad, they'll be more happy that you told them than if you didn't tell them. But like Mrs. Steiner said, if it's something you're worried about and don't feel comfortable with, I'll, I will be more than happy to look at it on your phone and decide what to do from there, okay? And I know other students have been afraid to come forward with something if it's their friend that's involved. Right. But what I've tried to stress is the school, the police, no one's going to tell that. They'll look into it, but they're not going to say, he said this or she said this about you. They're very discreet. Can you kind of follow up on that? Right. That's a biggie. Even at the high school level, that's been a big, big and issue that, on how that, they deal with it. Okay. And, the, and under no circumstance do the police have to tell anybody who reported something unless it is something that you are a victim of. So if I punch somebody, not as a, as a police officer, I punch somebody in, let's say, in a big group and it's a fight, the person wants to press charges against me so that person has a right to confront their accuser, which is the person that I punched. So I have to, by law, tell him who is accusing him of something. Now, in any other circumstance, when you report something, all you have to say, you guys know what the word anonymous means? Anonymous means I don't want to have to tell you, I have something to report, but I don't want to tell you who I am. So, or if you don't, if you knew, if I knew who you were, I wouldn't tell the other person because you wanted to remain anonymous. So, that's something you can always bring up to your teachers, you, you know, your parents, you can let them know, like, hey, this is going on, but I don't want them to know that I'm the one who's reporting it, and your parents then can decide what to do, and the police or teachers are a great medium for that. And that way, we take it over, and I either contact the school, or the school contacts me, and the teachers contact me, and then they never know. They never know. And we take it from there. And then you get a remain anonymous. So don't ever be afraid to bring it forward. Even if it's not to your parents. Does that answer the question?